Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. I'm Kerry Fink. Welcome to today's edition of the Senior Resource Center of Brevard and uh, our community information series. You know, we've been meeting uh, here at Zon Beachside uh, every last Monday of uh, the month. And so um, we've been able to cover all these things that are so important because part of our mission as a nonprofit network is to give information that helps you come up with your own aging plan is what our president and founder, Joe Steckler, likes to call it. We've given it a slightly more or less formal title. We call it getting your ducks in a row. But the point is, the point is you want to take advantage of the ideas and concepts that are presented so that you're ahead of the curve. Don't be caught in crisis mode. Something happens. Now, all of a sudden, it's an emergency. Much better when we can get ahead of it. So all this year, we've been talking about several areas that are so important for your aging plan. We began the year. Uh, with the topic of legal. What are legal documents that you need to have in place so that um, there's a plan for everything. Government has a great plan and everybody is, smiles at the joke. I, I'm here from the government. I'm here to help you. Government has a plan for you. Much better that you make sure it's the plan that you would like to have to be sure that it all lines up together. The second month, we talked about finances. And there's a lot of questions about that. It's not just, do I have a retirement account? There's a lot of uh, things like, when do you start your Social Security? How do you make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck? Then we moved on from there to talk a little bit about uh, if you're going to choose to age in place, meaning you want to stay in your present home, what are the things that you would do to be able to make sure you can do that safely? Everything from house modifications so that it's senior friendly to just security at home if you're going to be there. The next month we moved on to a lot of people say, Listen, the kids are out of the house. I'm ready to downsize. I'm willing to look at assisted living, some other options. I don't want to have to cut grass anymore, whatever the case is. So we had some real good sessions on that. We then moved on from there to medical. And that's thinking about everything that you need to understand, both about medical things that you might run into, but even just health and wellness. And then uh, most recently, we talked about Medicare because... Um, that's mainly going to be a big impact is you do have a doctor's appointment uh, and hopefully that's about it. But if you have to see specialists or have other tests done, you really want to know the ins and out and make sure that coverage is right for you. So that brings us to this month. And by the way, if you've missed any of these, every single one of these is archived. You get them at helping seniors of Brevard.org. You, there's a search bar. You can go in and click and say, I want to know about finances. I want to know about legal. And all the videos, not only the videos, the radio shows, and the magazine articles, everything is there at your fingertips. If you like video and things like that, you can check us out on the Helping Senior Brevard YouTube channel. And if you like uh, prefer Facebook, all the videos and, and things are there as well. Just make sure you access it, like, and share it with your friends. So this month's topic, to kind of round out our series, is about transportation. And we have a real expert in the house that we're gonna talk with today about this. Her name is Rachel McLean, and she is with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. And her title is Director of Case Management. We're gonna talk about that and just, because I wanna be sure that I understand what a case manager does. Before we get there, I wanna talk about transportation. A lot of people say, well, I have my car, I'm good, and that's great. What if there comes a time when you can't drive or you decide it may not be the best thing for you to be driving? At that point, you're going to look for some options. And I can tell you, Nancy Deerdorf, who's our operations director, she takes upwards of four or 500 calls now a month from seniors and their families trying to sort out different things. And one of the top categories that comes up over and over is transportation. How do I get to my doctor's office? How do I get out and get groceries if you don't have a car? Is there public transportation? Can I get somebody to come get me? What are my options? And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And I'm also going to reserve a minute or two toward the end to talk about another kind of transportation. That is the Helping Seniors Foundation Cruise, which is a fundraiser for Helping Seniors. I'm taking a little bit of license with that, but we'll go for it. So, Rachel, welcome today. How are you? 
I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So I just want to start to ask, let's, let's start with the basic question. I have an idea of what I think I know a case manager is. In fact, I know from like hospital visits, they say, oh, we have a case manager assigned to you so that you can go for your physical therapy or if you need rehab or something after your hospital stay. Can you kind of clear that up for those of us that don't really understand all this? Absolutely. Um, that That's a good question because the person that is designated to you in a facility, in a hospital, a rehab facility, and then they're known as a case manager, they have a very specific job. And that's to get you from point A to point B safely. So their job is to get you from the hospital into your next um, system of care, whether that's a rehab facility or home with, with home health, um, or from the rehab facility home safely. But that just means having a safety plan in place and getting you to the next step. That means that they're their job stops right there. A private case manager, however, is somebody who's attached and assigned specifically to you. And that person is looking at you in a global um, situation. And so they're not just looking at the safety of one transition. They're looking at your housing. We're looking at your bill pay. Are you able to get to and from those vital appointments? Are you able to get the nutrition that you need in the home? And if that's not a safe situation, what that next situation looks like and how to get there. Okay. So one of the things that I would ask uh, as I was thinking about this, because I, you know, uh, we have a lot of friends in the Helping Seniors uh, of Brevard organization who go in and they provide home care and things like that. And I know a lot of times I've heard as I talk with different people who are providing those services that they say a lot of times they feel like they're an extension of the family because maybe the adult children are like living out of state. Maybe everybody's from, you know, the Midwest or something and mom and dad have started coming down to Florida for years. And they get down and visit mom and dad when they can, but then they don't really, they're getting concerned because maybe it's getting tougher for mom and dad to do all those things and we got to find a solution, but they don't know who to call or how to go. And I guess a lot of times, and I'm thinking about, you know, our own personal situation where we, uh, we were trying to step in and do that for our moms as they were getting older. And one of the challenges for us, even though I would like to think I'm highly intelligent. The problem is we don't really have a frame of reference. So the doctor says, well, your mom needs this or they need this kind of thing. And we really don't, we're doing the best we can to keep up with it. But I guess that's one of the things as an expert you sort of have, right? Absolutely. I, I think it's, um, that's a common question. Most people think that there's only a need if there's no one to fill those shoes. And, and absolutely, there, there are situations where a case manager can fill the role as a power of attorney or a healthcare surrogate and actually can be that extension to the family. But in many cases, someone just does not know how to find the specific community resources. There's a lot of things out there and, and a lot of complicated systems to have to navigate and having an expert by your side is important. Um, so we might have families who are estranged have families that are at a distance or, or in fact a working daughter or, or son that's here in town and just does not have the time to invest in getting mom to and from a doctor's appointment but is concerned about what the doctor has to say and wants to make sure somebody is collecting that valuable information and, and passing it back and forth from specialty doctor to regular doctor and to them. You know, I, I was smiling as you were telling that story because this is literally a story in our, in our own family where, uh, you know, uh, we we discovered that it was probably better if one of us went to the doctor with a, with one of the moms because if the mom went by herself, what did the doctor say? Oh, everything's fine. <laughs> and then we're trying to sort that part of it out. And I guess that's one of the real benefits is like at least when we went in, if mom couldn't think of the question to ask, we would at least try to ask what seemed important for us. But you're right. So many people don't have the time for that. And there's another factor in this that uh, we talked about. We've set our uh, theme for this year to be um, get your ducks in a row. But through the process of going through this, we also determined our theme already for the next year, which is don't try this on your own. Because what we keep learning is, in particularly like we had this when we were talking about the legal uh, situation, you might think you're smart downloading a form on you know, online or something. And when you really need it to work, it becomes a nightmare because it's not going to do what you want to do. And now you're not in a place or a position where anything can be changed. So you're stuck with, again, if you don't have a plan, the government has a plan. It may not necessarily be the plan that you want to have happen. But I was thinking as you were talking about this, the things that you're able to do as a 
case manager really make all the difference in the world because you have the experience and you also know who to call even if something presents that's new for you because you have that set of resources. So kind of with that as a background, if it's okay, let's shift into the world of transportation because I guess that's something when we were talking about this particular thing, you said, I get a lot of calls about it. Well, absolutely. Um, I think the the average person, they think they're, like you said earlier, good to go because they have their own vehicle or because they have a family member who's taking them now to and from the doctor. Um, but that family member could have a crisis. They, they could be out of town. They could like to travel. There's a lot of different things that can get in the way of that program and or that plan for them. And so I, as a, a case manager, one of the things that I like to do is build a plan A and plan B and even a plan C. Um, I think it's important to know what you're going to do and when something falters. And so there are a lot of different um, different resources in the community that people on an average basis might not be aware of because we're located in a healthcare system and we're out talking to people all the time. We're a little more privy to some things that are out there. We understand um, what resources we can pull from that people aren't always aware of. And so there are free transportation systems out there. There are... Um, there are a number of different ways that you can call upon a paid transportation source to to go with you to an appointment that might even add some extra added uh, layers of security for your family members. A lot of people don't consider maybe using a private duty agency when they're going to a doctor's appointment. It might be roughly the same cost to hire a caregiver or to pay for a non-medical transport to take you to and from the doctor. But if you hire a private duty um, care person to go with you. You actually have someone who's with you safely, makes sure that you get into the doctor's appointment, is able to make sure that that script of whatever you're, the, the doctor is writing for makes it back into the proper hands and that somebody gets home safely the entire time is never left alone. So if you have any elements of confusion with your parents or something like that, that's an extra added layer of security and it still has a very similar cost. Um, if they're a little more independent, there are some free resources around town also that they can sign up for as well. Well, you know, one of the things I was going to mention is, is I, I, I feel Nancy Deardorff, our operations director, is paying every time I hear a voicemail because we all get voicemails that come in as people call because Nancy is diligent about calling everybody back as soon as they call. So she goes, listen, the only reason you're going to get the answering machine is because I'm on a different assignment at that minute, but I will call you back. And so somebody will always call up and say, but I got to be at the doctor tomorrow. <laughs> That's a terrible problem because about that point, I guess you're probably down to, you know, finding an Uber or a cab or something like that. That's a possibility. Um, what I would say is part of what you're talking about is getting your ducks in a row, right? Yes. So that there's, there is an element of planning and everything. And the longer you have to get something ready, the less likely you are to be dealing with less choices. The more, the higher the crisis the reduced number of, of options you have out there. That's that's inevitable. But if you are assigned, like some of these re free resources we'll talk about, um, if you if you sign up, I, I'm a, a, a big advocate for pre-enrolling with different systems. Okay. You may or may not need a caregiving agency down, down the road, but vet them, talk to them, see who you like the best. Who do you, are their prices reasonable or are, are they able to respond to you in a good amount of time? Do they have, minimum numbers of hours that you have to commit to and then sign their contracts, put them aside. And then when you need the, the resource, all you have to do is call. Yeah. Then if you need something like that kind of a resource to get to and from a doctor, that's going to be a lot more likely than some of the free transportation systems. The free transport is going to probably require you to make at least a week um, of given time. Um, our friends at Aging Matters have a couple different programs out there. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Aging Matters. They do the Meals on Wheels program, but they do a lot of amazing things in the community. But they have a TransServe program that is for people that are uh, more on the independent side that can get to and in, in and out of a vehicle on their own. But they only require a week to be able to set up um, transportation. And they'll not only take you to doctor's appointments, but they'll also take you to things like the grocery store, or if you have a family member who's even in a skilled nursing facility and you wanna go visit, they'll do things like that. They have a, a veterans program as well that works um, taking veterans to and from the VA, which that's a challenge for a lot of yes. people because of distance, Brevard County is huge. So um, getting to and from the VA, if you're a veteran, they have other veterans that will drive you. So not only do you get free transportation, but you get a little camaraderie along the way. Um, so that's a great resource out there. There's also um, a group called Resource Center for Disability Solutions. 
used to be known as Center for Independent Living, um, and they are just that. That's exactly what they do. They are resources for people who are disabled. And so if you are able to schedule your own appointment, they'll take you to and from those doctor's appointments. They have a number of other free resources that they do, including the grab bar programs and things like that, both of those resources. Um, but they'll get you to and from those doctor's appointments. And all you have to do is call them when you finish the doctor's appointment. They'll come back and pick you up. And if for some reason they're not able to schedule you because it's getting too close, then you just call them and, and ask them to put you on a, on a wait list. Um, if they have cancellations, they'll fit you in. If they can't do it that way, I'm, I'm all about picking one and then calling the next and, and trying through all of these. But in the end, almost always we're able to get free transportation for our clients. It sounds like the key, the key common denominator is getting your ducks in a row, meaning that you're planning ahead and you're not calling last minute. Oh, I have to be at the doctor tomorrow because I guess that's a really a complicated thing because, it's, it's you know, there's a couple of things. I remember especially talking with a bunch of people that were helping seniors throughout when we were all locked down with p pandemic kind of things, you know, and, and I remember it was interesting. One of the things that I never actually would have thought became a need, uh, the, the, the people that would call the helpline in those days often would say, they probably needed food themselves, but they were concerned with food for Fido. Like, how am I going to feed my dog? I can't get to the grocery store. And so really some of this really comes down to putting all that together. And I know I've heard one of the benefits from uh, some of the, the places that will help you at home uh, with companion care. They say, listen, we'll sit down. We'll work out a menu that works with whatever the doctor's telling you that needs to happen. Like doctor says you're on a diabetic diet or whatever. And then not only that, we can go to the grocery store, help you fetch that and get that set up the right way so that you're, you know, now you're going to be safe at home with that. So I think there's a lot of different tools that are available. And there was a thing that you mentioned that I really want to come back and, and talk about because I think it's so, I think it is so important. You said there's a lot of great programs out there and people oftentimes will ask us as helping seniors to say, okay, um, you know, I support you guys when you come in, you're, you're asking us to help support the work of helping seniors. What exactly am I supporting? And, and so our answer is, you know, we have the county senior information line, and now we're in our 12th year of service with that. And I think last month, uh, Nancy reported at a board meeting, it was like 450 calls or something like that from seniors looking for help on a, on a number of different issues. And again, we're a very small organization, so it's not like we can write a check and say, here, go do this. We have to exist to help seniors by connecting them to resources that help them. And I'm amazed at how many good resources are out there, but it is a complicated like patchwork thing. You have to know where you're going to find a solution. And that's why to me, it's always amazing how effective Nancy is able to be because she knows the right person to call at the right time. And that's what you're, that's what you're talking about. You're talking about getting kind of like a plan in order. Absolutely. That, that's where professionals come into play. Um, you may or may not need ongoing coordination of all of these different events. You may not need somebody to go and sit with you at a doctor's appointment, but these professionals are and case managers, Nancy's position, all of us, we're, we're located and um, centrally coming together in a lot of networking groups and getting to know what other professionals do. And we don't do that just so that we can receive referrals from each other. We do that because we better understand what resources are out there for our clients. And so that's what it's all about. That's how Nancy's able to give that information to people is because she's continuously talking with all of the different organizations in town about what programs they have to offer. And if they have something new going on, or if there's, it, even if there's a need, I, I guarantee you she's connecting people to people in the community that aren't just calling in on that hotline. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking even while you were saying that, because you just hit the nail on the head. You know, we often have heard this expression, it takes a village to raise a child. But, you know, if we're doing this right and we care about our seniors, and I get pretty passionate about this because in the work of helping seniors, we explain we're 100% local to Brevard County. So we're concerned about seniors right here where we're at. And we have one in four people in Brevard County is over the age of 65. And actually, if you use ARP, which will send you a senior membership card the day you turn 50, that's half of us in Brevard County. So it's a lot of people. And the thing is that it really does take a village to look after our seniors as well. I mean, you know, it, it's because how can you, you could be an expert in aerospace, you could be an expert engineer, you could be an expert attorney, you could be an expert doctor. 
you know, you can have all this like great expertise, but you still got to know who to call. Because a lot of times it's interesting. You know, a lot of people who call the helpline, they have no resources whatsoever. So we're kind of a last last gasp of hope. And I'm surprised how often we're able to help. But oftentimes it's people who do have resources. They just don't know who to who to call or who to trust. And let's talk about that for a minute, because in Florida, we, we were smiling driving down the highway because if you turn around every few miles, there's another there's another new apartment complex coming up or something else being built. And it has to do with the number of people who are moving to Florida from out of state. It's just it's just incredible. And those people don't have a frame of reference. They don't know who to call, where to start. People are turning 65 every day. And sometimes you don't think about the things you need until you're kind of like arriving Johnny on the scene, you know, and then you're trying, you're trying to sort it out as you navigate through and are helping families uh, as a case manager, you must run into all those types and you probably have kind of a common place. You start with each of those <laughs> to help them figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, when we're bringing somebody into case management services with with our firm, it could be different for, for each. So I would say specifically, if you're looking into a case manager, ask them what they do for their initiation and intake. But we start with two different assessments, one that is more of a social assessment and one that is more of a clinical assessment. So we have an RN case manager who will do a clinical assessment, which basically takes a Polaroid of what today looks like. I want to be able to in any point in time, if I have to walk into a doctor, I want to be able to hand them something that says, this is what normal looks like for mom or for dad. So that if there's a change, if we've had a, a condition change or something, they can see exactly where that came from. And this is what we consider um, a quote baseline. Um, we also do a, a social intake. And so during that, we're going to talk about everything that we could have come up in the future. And this is kind of where we learn what we really need to fill in those gaps with. So we talk about um, everything from what are your vital statistics in case I need to share those someday um, to what's your plan for a hurricane? Do you have um, shutters on your home? Do you have a place that you go to when the storms are coming into town? And if you don't, then what kind of plan can I put in place for you? Which a lot of times I recommend to families that they look into, uh, they take their first dive into assisted living by looking at what we call a respite. Um, so th that basically means a, a hotel room set up in assisted living. Um, that they can stay at for a short period of time, they charge a nightly rate. So what better situation to be in when there's a hurricane coming around than a building that's probably built a lot stronger than your smaller home that has generators and some backup supplies and even nurses around the clock that are going to be there with you. And you're going to truly have a hurricane party versus having a little bit of a panic in your home. Um, so we try that. That's one way that we kind of pick up on, OK, well, we should probably talk about what our plan looks like, a better plan for your hurricane. And um, so then we we talk about all of those different kinds of things. If something happens to you, who am I calling? Um, who am I going to keep informed? Who do you want me to talk with on a regular basis? How do you get to and from your doctor's appointments? What do you want me to do for you in, in regards to transportation? Do you feel safe navigating your home? Do we need to look at grab bars? Do we need to put in ramps? Do we need to do any of those things? What about a pendant system? Have you ever had any falls? Do we, um, do you maybe even need some strength building where I need to talk to maybe a physical therapist about coming in and getting you a little stronger in the home? So we, we do a little bit of a, um, just a conversation to talk about what everyday life looks like. And that pulling from that tells me exactly what I need to refer somebody for. It's helpful. No, Absolutely. You know, and I, th I think it's kind of interesting because as a case manager, you're the director of case management for a law office. And I think that's a little bit kind of on the cutting edge of technology because I don't know that many elder law firms that go to that route. But I think uh, you, you're with the law office of Amy B. Van Falsen, and Amy herself has been a longtime friend of the Helping Seniors Organization and a real strong advocate for seniors. And and I I I. I'm guessing, but I kind of feel like one of the reasons she felt like developing this in the office is like, I help you get all your paperwork. So everything's airtight, buttoned up, and you're good to go with that. But now we want to be sure that the plan that you've got will keep you safe moving through things, right? Absolutely. Actually, I believe that what started case management in the law firm was because Amy had a client specifically who came to her and he had been exploited. And unfortunately, in this case, it had been an exploitation by a professional. Oh. And, and so it, 
put her in a scenario where she just didn't feel comfortable anymore um, at the moment anyway, handing somebody off to the community and not having somebody who was her eyes and ears to what a, an appropriate person was in, in the community. So she decided she wanted to take on a, a component of the law firm where she could be that helper towards somebody. It's not infrequent in a law firm that you have somebody who comes in that says, I know I need a power of attorney and a healthcare surrogate, but my family members are in jail or my family members are estranged and I really don't have anybody to serve on my behalf. And so in our case, the attorney will serve as power of attorney. Only the attorney can act on a legal and financial basis, but the Healthcare surrogacy is kind of extended to our department, and there's non-clinical and RN um, case managers that work in, within our department to kind of coordinate all of the care efforts. And that way, Amy is still the decision maker, uh, and she's making sure that you're taken care of in, in the best way possible. But she has kind of a team to go out there and be the hands-on to to help you through everyday beings. You know, coming back to the transportation question, one of the things I get. Joe Steckler, our president and founder, he's always talked about when you make an aging plan or you're setting something up to do um, to get your ducks in a row. He talks about a thing called elements of care. And what he means by that is purchase the correct amount of service or help that you need at the stage that you're at. In other words, don't jump ahead and, and spend more than you need to for where you're at. So we've talked about this a lot that he'll say one of the things that um, he likes to see is where somebody starts getting some companion care in the home because it gets the people familiar with that. And then particularly through COVID, I think a thing that we learned was if the adult children are out of state and we're used to coming to see mom every three or four months, you know, come down for a weekend, they felt in touch. But when COVID happened and nobody could get any place, it became even more important to have, uh, you know, hands and arms and eyes right here, you know, on, on the ground. So, but the, but the question I got to was, I've also, when I talk to people who are in that line of work, they say they're kind of the first point and they are walking with the senior for quite a while. And then there's a point where it makes sense. They're going to have to hand off because maybe, you know, something is happening memory wise, or there's other things that are going on that require a higher level of care. And that's what Joe's talking about. Then you move to the next element of care. The question I was kind of circling back around to is, <clears throat> Do you ever get involved? This is going to be a funny question. Do you ever get involved when it's decided that it's probably not safe for mom to drive anymore? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <Good>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, it's not abnormal for someone to come talk to a case manager or talk to the attorney even when they get to a place where they're like, mom and dad are being a little stubborn. Um, won't we all? Um, but that they're to a place where something needs to change. And so they're, they're leaning on that professional to um, be the voice of reason for, for um, family members. And sometimes we pull other community resources and extend that even further to help us along with that. And so um, maybe they're working with aging services and there is a dementia diagnosis. And so we can, the, between the case manager, the attorney and the doctor, we can kind of come together and have a little more realistic um, conversation about what's appropriate. And there are systems in place also that if you feel somebody is truly unsafe and it needs to be reported, that they will have to go through a testing kind of uh, scenario in order to be able to maintain their license. But most of the time, a softer conversation is enough to talk about, hey, how about I help you a little bit? And because you never know that that person that themselves might actually be prideful because they don't want to lean on another person. They don't want to burden their child with having to take them to the appointments. But if we can say, hey, bet you let me help me help with that, then we might be able to relieve that burden and it doesn't ever have to get to a point where it's a little more forced. Yeah, and, and not only that, I guess probably because of your expertise and your knowledge, then you're able to say it's not quite as frightening as you think because there's a lot of good options. We can get this worked out. You're still going to be able to get to this and that. Is that part of, like, let's just say you're a, you know, let's just say for a second you're an adult child and you really are concerned about mom's driving. I do remember having that talk with my mother. <laughs> and and is there a way to make that any easier? I would always say if you, if you have a professional in your life, rely on them. Because if nothing else, that professional is probably going to be willing to not only be the voice of reason, but maybe sometimes even play the bad guy. Right. Um, and so if, if, we can remove that burden from you and allow you to just 
keep the relationship of mother daughter, you know, and not have to carry that burden on your own. Makes all the sense in the world. What are what is uh, something that you might want to share? I guess I'm just trying to think, is there a question or an area that we haven't talked about? Again, our theme for today, we're talking about let's talk transportation. And we're talking about, obviously, if you have your car and you're good at driving, it's not a problem. But for many people, as we get older, you know, may, maybe it's things like I can drive OK in the day, but I don't trust my vision at night or things like that. How do you help a family or a person like reconcile all those different changes moving all at the same time and anything else that you would want to present as kind of like advice, like, Hey, if you think you're running into this or you could see it coming at you down the road, maybe start to start to plan like this. Um, care coordination is, is very helpful. So even if you choose to lean on a case manager or a family member, whoever that appropriate person is to kind of help to pull all of those things, elements together for you, it'll keep you from having the anxiety of trying to do it yourself. So um, say it's your niece and your niece is, is coordinating doctor's appointments. If you live in an assisted living or an independent living, I say lean first to the transportation that's available through the community. Oftentimes that's limited to a specific days of the week or specific time periods, but then that's going to help you as a care coordinator to make sure that you're staying within those parameters. Every doctor's office is well aware that you're going to be burdened with some of those um, stipulations. So if, if it's Tuesday, Thursday, nine to two, then when you're calling to make your doctor's appointments, try to stick to those days and times that you're going to go within that. Um, and if you have something that's rare, that's outside of that. I was thinking earlier when you were mentioning something that was last minute, oftentimes your doctor's appointment doesn't become last minute unless they're fitting you in. Um, but oftentimes labs, things like that, they can become something that is um, a little less um, short notice. And, and so you can call upon any number of those um, free transportation systems that we were talking about. And when we were talking about wait list earlier, a lot of times they have, you know, they're taking client A, B and C somewhere, but they can pick you up along the way and drop you off to go and get those laps done and then pick you up later. And if you have the flexibility that that they can fit you in they're they're going to be more than willing to do that. So I would say do that as well. I am a big, big advocate for pre enrollment, as I mentioned earlier. So with at least one home care company and oftentimes with my clients, I will do that with two. I'll choose two home care companies because I might have one who has a difficulty staffing a specific situation because we all know when you need something, it happens when it happens yesterday, right? You needed it and it happened immediately and you don't have time to schedule something. And if they're facing a difficult day where they're overbooked or whether they are they're short on caregivers, which is a problem. Uh, and since COVID has been a kind of a rampant issue, I try to have another backup plan as well. So I would enroll with two home care companies. Um, I would also look at both of those free transportation systems we were talking about earlier and enroll with both of them. And I know that's a lot of paperwork up front, a lot of little visits and things, but I'm telling you, it will save you when the time comes that you actually need to book something. You're going to be very grateful that you did that and not having to dish out a ton of money for Ubers to go different places. <laughs> Such good wisdom. Well, before we close up our conversation on this, let me ask you to share uh, how people get in touch with you if they've they've been watching this thing and like, well, this sounds good. I want to investigate some more about the possibility of ca of, uh, of case management or getting some help in that area. Or maybe it's just that somebody says, yeah, I like what you're saying about the transportation. Can you share a couple of numbers? How do they get in touch with you? Um, you can reach us anytime through our main phone number at 321-345-5945. And that's the law office. Um, and also just a little add in, it, there are case managers all around town. And I'll tell you, you don't have to be on services for them to be a resource to you. If you have a simple question, just call and ask. They're, they're more than happy to put those things together. Majority of people who work in, in that specific profession are there because they love being helpers. And that's just what we want to do. It's a win for us if we're able to connect you to a resource. Thank you for saying that, because I was going to say, you know, one of the things that we've been very fortunate about in the helping seniors world is finding really good people who really care about our seniors. And I think I think that's that's one of the reasons that maybe we're afraid and we try to go it alone as we don't know that those people are out there. But I will say that it really seems like uh, the people that we have the pleasure of working with in the helping seniors that are connected with helping seniors are people who really, yes, at the end of the day, it is a business, it's a vocation, all that. 
but they're in it for the right reasons, meaning they're really wanting to help and give service. So I think it's very important. So if you're watching this and uh, it makes sense, uh, by all means, give Rachel McLean at the law office of Amy B. Van Falsen a call. And don't be afraid to ask the question, you know, right? You know, you're, you're not under obligation. They're not going to send people to your door to start making you sign things or things like that. Get the, get the information, get the help you need now. So yeah, I'm going to shift for just a moment because I did say I was going to come back and talk about the uh, other kind of transportation. It's the kind that goes on the water, stops at pretty Caribbean islands and goes to Mexico. We're talking about uh, the Helping Seniors Foundation Cruise. And I want to tell you, <clears throat> we're so excited. This is actually a fundraiser for the Helping Seniors Organization. Um, our, our travel director is a guy named Chris Morse. He himself says... He's been doing travel since dinosaurs roamed the earth, which more realistically means he's been doing this since 1982. You'll have to work on the dates and see if that all coincides. But he is an expert travel uh, agent, as is his wife, Betty, and they are they are special needs certified. So they're really adept at helping people travel that may have thought their traveling days were, were um, already beyond them. And it, that nothing gives them greater pleasure than to see somebody successfully travel because it's just it's a whole level of hope, excitement and things to look forward to that people don't have. And so he came to us. He said, we should do a Helping Seniors Travel Club. I'll work with the uh, cruise lines and things. We'll get them to donate a portion of the proceeds back. And it'll be a fundraiser for the Helping Seniors Organization. And if we were all set up to do our first one, then the pandemic stopped everything. So we had to reschedule like five different dates. And we finally, last October, we went out sailing with 50 folks from Brevard County and had the greatest time in the world. In fact, we talked, we were just talking about this the other day. The oldest lady who came along with us was 93 and she was traveling by herself, but she wasn't traveling by herself, right? Because she's with a whole group, Chris and Betty on board. Anything comes up, they know who to call, where to go. It's like, don't try this on your own, right? So you're alone, but you're not alone because you've got all the support you need. Well, anyway, it was such a big success that MSC Cruises invited us to come back. So on January 6th and January 8th, 2023, we will go sailing on a beautiful, beautiful, let me tell you about the ship. It's the MSC Meraviglia, and it is, you know, it's an Italian cruise line. So Italians know a thing or two about design. They, the guys that built the Ferrari, all those cars, so they know how to make stuff look pretty. And the service on board is just astounding. Everybody who goes on the ship is going to have such a great time. What's equally astounding is that the price point that uh, Chris was able to organize for this particular cruise beats anything that you'll you'll ever see. In fact, he says, "I challenge you. If you find something on the internet, it doesn't matter what the cruise is. Call me. I can I can match that and probably do better." Because Chris has some clout with the cruise line. So, like, for example, in this in this case, he gets everybody a balcony cabin. I mean, and you're paying basically what amounts to an inside cabin rate. And the cool thing is the ship loves to have these groups on board because um, it makes it easy for them. They This is what they do. They want to get you introduced to the cruise line. So hopefully you'll come back and again and again and have a great time. They're willing to give back money that funds us in the helping seniors world. One of the most important things that we as a charity think is a benefit is its socialization, right? Because you're meeting new friends on a cruise ship when you go, but oftentimes you're meeting from people from all over and they fly back to where they are and now you're Facebook friends or something. Here you make your friends on the ship and you're like, let's go have lunch Tuesday when we're back in board. So it's, it's a great thing and you have to be in it uh, and try it. And so uh, there's two sailings. There's a sailing on January 6th, which is a two night weekend sailing. So if you got very limited time, it's an incredible deal. And you can come with us for the weekend and see how you like it and maybe come back for more later. Then there's a sailing on January the 8th that is a seven night sailing. So it's a great vacation that you get to go to the Bahamas and to Mexico. And in both sailings, you get to go to MSC's private island called Ocean K Marine Reserve. And if you've never been there, you know, if you care anything about the planet or have any kind of feeling like we should try to take better care of our world, this is a perfect case of that. What this was, was a garbage dump. Back in the day, Ocean K was where people in the Bahamas, they towed their trash there and left it. And so MSC said, we want to buy this garbage dump and we want to show you how you can reclaim it and make it ecologically sound. And that's exactly what they did. And you walk around there, it's like a paradise. It's like... 
it's it's a cool highlight and both sailings stop there and so you can go with us for two nights seven nights or come with us for all nine nights and uh, so you you got to give Nancy a call. She'll get you in connection with um, Chris, but you call 321-473-7770. That's our Helping Seniors Information Helpline. And I think that that's the end of my commercial about it, but it is a fundraiser. And if, if you don't help us, uh, we can't keep doing what we do. So thank you for considering cruising with the Helping Seniors Group. And thank you, Rachel, for being with us on today. And thank you guys for being here and being part of it. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.